Shalom Israel. The name of this video is, Have You Been Hypnotized by America? I've been reading through the scriptures and just looking at things in general, and it's just so crystal clear to me that America is a wicked, wicked place. It's a place that's full of witchcraft and sorcery. And that's why I named this video, Have You Been Hypnotized by America? Now before we get into the scriptures, let's look up the word hypnosis and see what it means. All right, this is dictionary.com. The word is hypnosis. It says, an artificially induced trance state resembling sleep, characterized by heightened susceptibility to suggestion. In other words, being hypnotized is when you're in a trance-like state, your guard is down, and you're easily influenced to do things. Now that's pretty deep because based on this definition, a lot of people are walking around hypnotized and they don't even know it. But see, the scriptures told us this was going to happen. So let's get into the scriptures. We're going to go to 1 Timothy 4, verses 1 and 2. Verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. All right, now let's take a closer look at these verses. Verse 1 says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, meaning in the end times, some shall depart from the faith. Now what's the faith? This truth, the Bible, the scriptures. It says, Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, people were going to leave this truth and latch on to wickedness and lies instead. Verse 2 says, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. In other words, their natural ability to judge right from wrong was going to be altered. The line between good and evil was going to become blurry. That's a conscience that's seared with a hot iron. Now, how does that happen? See, what happens is this. You get bombarded with so much garbage on a daily basis through TV and the radio that your ideal of reality becomes twisted. Everything is backwards in America. And don't be naive about that. It's set up that way by design. Let's look at a scripture. This is Isaiah 29, verse 16. It says, Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he have no understanding? See, that's what happens. Everything in America is turned upside down. Everything is backwards and opposite of what the Most High established. That's the clay telling the potter that he didn't design it right. That's why it says, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Now, let me give you some examples. This is Leviticus 20 and 10. It says, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Now, the Most High says here very clearly that a man is not supposed to sleep with another man's woman. But if you turn on the radio to what they call music today, you hear all these songs where guys are talking about taking another guy's girl and sleeping with her and then sending her back to her man. And then you got women making songs about having multiple sex partners and creeping on the low and using this guy for sex and getting money from this guy. It's ridiculous. Now, music wasn't like this back in the day, so you got to ask yourself, why is it like that now? And the answer is simple, because the powers that be, the people that control the music industry, that's the message that they want to promote. Why? Because they want to keep us in an altered, hypnotic, drunken state. But remember, though, it's the Most High who's actually controlling everything. So when you don't truly seek the Most High, He allows you to be seduced and put to sleep by all this wickedness. This is Isaiah 29, verses 9 through 12. 
verse 9, it says, Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. So it says they're drunk, but not with wine. So if they're not drunk off of wine, what are they drunk from? They're drunk from the philosophies that's taught here and the wicked vibration that's pushed out here. Verse 10 says, For the Lord have poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep and have closed your eyes, the prophets and your rulers, the seers have he covered. So the Most High has people sleep because they're caught up in nonsense instead of this word. Verse 11. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. So what's happening here? You got people that hear this truth, but they don't understand it because it's sealed to them. But I want to make this clear. Why is it sealed? And why can't they understand it? Let's go to the book of Mark chapter 4 and get the answer. Now this was Christ, Yahweh Shai, teaching the people that was around him. We're going to start at verse 2. It says, And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Now let's jump down to verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Now notice verse 7. It says, And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Now let's go down to verse 18. It says, And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. See, this is the answer. People hear the word, but they're so consumed by the cares of this world that they can't retain the word. And that's the seducing spirit of America that I'm talking about. It pulls you away from the word and floods your mind with all types of garbage that doesn't mean anything. See, some of our people are gone. And the Bible says that. The only thing they care about is getting the next new cell phone or the next new pair of sneakers or the new this and the new that or whatever. Things that don't mean nothing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. But when your affections are set more on things than the most high, that's when you got the problem. Matter of fact, let's get that scripture. It's a Colossians 3 and 2. It says, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. In other words, your focus should be on the most high and all those other things should be secondary to this truth. The Bible speaks about that also in Matthew 6 and 33. It says, but seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, if you truly seek the Most High and his righteousness, you'll get those things when it's time for you to get those things. But if you seek those things and you don't make the Most High your first priority, you're going off. You might get those things, but they're not going to do you any good. Because the scripture says in Mark 8 and 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And that's what America does. It has you chasing things. But in the midst of you chasing things, you're going to lose your own soul. So that's one example. Now let me show you one more example of how wicked America is and how the people in charge of it have people hypnotized. This is Leviticus 20 and 13. It says, If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Now that's a law that the Most High set up. 
But in America, it's okay to be a homosexual. That's why they call America the land of the free. Because here, you're free to be wicked. You're free to be an abomination. You're free to sin. You're free to do pretty much whatever you want to do. Now listen to this. They even go as far as saying that it's healthy for a man to explore his feminine side. What feminine side? A man is not supposed to have a feminine side. Let's see what the scriptures say about an effeminate man. This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So according to this verse, no effeminate man is going to make it into the kingdom. But again, here in America, they specialize in producing effeminate men. It's so common to see here that a lot of people have become numb to it. Back in the day, you couldn't catch a brother wearing tight jeans. But now, it's a style. I'm telling y'all, America is crazy and backwards. Let's get another scripture. This is Isaiah 5 and 20. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. And that's what happens here. If a brother wants to really get into this word and try to do right according to the scriptures, he's a cornball in this society. But if a dude puts on a pair of tight, bright yellow pants with a pair of purple sneakers and a green shirt, he's cool. Well, you could thank America for that logic. This place is finished. Done. It's got to be destroyed because it's too far gone and the judgment has already been pronounced on it. Let's get this last scripture. It's Revelations 18, verse 4. I'm going to go down to verse 10. Starting at 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. So the scriptures is telling us to come out of America, not actually leave, but come out of the ways of America. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High have remembered her iniquities. So again, the sins of this place are so wicked that they have reached up to heaven. You can't fix that. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. So this place is going to receive double payback for the wickedness it's done. Verse 7. How much she have glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow and shall see no sorrow. Because see, that's the attitude that's perpetuated here. America feels like it could just keep producing wickedness and nothing's ever going to happen. But that's not the case. Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord power who judgeth her. Verse 9, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. So the Most High is going to do away with this place in one hour by nuclear destruction. So Israel, come out of America. Unplug from this system. Get into the scriptures and get understanding so that when the destruction comes, you won't be a part of it. That's our prayer and our hope that we get saved from this destruction. So with that, I say, Shalom.